Okay, in this video we're going to create a spinning top, which is the first toy that we design in the Toy Story unit. Before you do this, you probably need to manage your account, go to preferences, and make sure that your units are set to millimeters and grams. If they're set to inches and pounds, fix that, click save units, and then come back to your menu and you can create a new document. If you're doing it differently as a one-off, you can change the units for just one document by clicking on the three horizontal lines and going to Workspace Units. But generally you'll be doing the same thing and it's easier to set it once and forget. Okay, I'm going to hide these planes and I'm going to start a sketch and I can click on the top plane here, even though it's hidden. Press the N key and now the camera has spun around for me. We have a constraint when we're designing our spinning top that it needs to fit inside a 75 by 75 millimeter area. So the first thing we're going to do is to constrain that with dimensions. See it's gone completely black because this corner was attached to the origin. And then we're going to draw a line across the middle to find the center point, we're going to select all of this and come up to construction or press the Q key to toggle it as construction lines. First thing we need to do is snap to the middle of this line is to have a circle that's about six millimeters. This is where we're going to put the pencil through to be the vertical part of the spinning top. Next thing you need to do is decide how you're going to design it in terms of the shape. You should have already sketched it in your booklet. So let's assume that you have an idea and the outside might be mainly circular. So I can come up and snap to here. And we've got our main body. It doesn't have to be circular, but as long as it fits inside this box, then you know you are doing the right thing. Next thing I'm going to do is to draw some various shapes that I want to be cut out and then I'm going to pattern them around because we know if the weight is distributed evenly around the spinning top that it will spin smoothly. But if we have a cutout on one side but not on the other, it's going to wobble and it's not going to spin for very long. So I might use my three point arc tool. over here to draw a shape just getting it rough for now press escape key when I'm finished now a good chance to show you some other constraints we have one called tangent which we'll use on this one here it will make them smoothly go into one another click the tangent much much smoother I'll also do the same up here and you can always experiment by trying it on ones like this. If it changes too much, you can hit the undo button, which is in the top left of the screen. Now, the reason I'm making this so big is that we have a five millimeter cutter. So anything smaller than five millimeters, the cutter won't be able to get inside. So if you want to test that at any stage, just quickly do a circle and set it to five millimeters and then drag and move it around. If for instance I was to alter this and make it much skinnier like so, if I click and drag the cutter it will fit in here but once it gets to this corner you can see the cutter won't actually be able to get into the corner. So keep that in mind. Everything you draw needs to be bigger than five millimeters for the cutter to get inside and cut it out. So I'm going to delete that one. I'm going to leave this shape as is, that will do for this example. The only thing I might do is drag the center point to make that bigger, like we just discussed. Okay. Rather than try and draw this several other times around and try and get them all centered and accurate, there's already something built into the program. We come up to the linear pattern, but instead click the arrow and go to circular pattern. We can now click on what we've just drawn and you can see that it's offering to copy it around. We need to move the center of the rotation to match the center 
of our circle. And if we double click where it says three times, we can actually change the amount. Now this one's a little bit too close. There's a good chance that it'll snap when it's being cut. So we might try five times and we should have enough material here for it to be strong enough. So once I'm happy with that, it's telling me to press the left click button to save it. And it is now saved. I can always, once I finish the sketch, come back to this. I can double click on this like anything else. I can retrospectively edit and it will update. And you'll also find that you should be able to do things like clicking and dragging the original and all of the other ones will match. I liked it better the first time, so I'm going to undo that. Close my sketch and I'm ready to make it three dimensional. I'm going to go to extrude, click in the section that I would like to have 3D. We need to set it to three millimeters to match the plastic that it's being cut from. And we don't want any draft or any of these other options. You can see our before and after. Hit the tick. And we've got our base shape. Just as an example, you can have parts that are cut the whole way through. You can also have things that are engraved partially into the surface. So we'll do one of those now. We'll click sketch and we'll click on this top flat surface. Press the N key, and we're drawing on the top of what we've already done. I might have this time another arc. I'm going to draw it like so. And rather than redraw this circle, we have something built in called Use. It's next to the text. We click on it and then click on our shape and it makes a copy of it on the current sketch, locked to match. Now I can use the trim tool and cut off these extra little bits I don't want. And I'm ready to once again do a circular pattern. Click on my geometry, drag it to the middle to match and put in that I want five times to match. Okay, left click to finish, and I'm finished with this sketch. This time my extrude is going to be slightly different. I'm going to click on extrude, and then click my sections one at a time. That will be added, but instead of coming up, we actually want to change it to remove. And we're going to go down one millimeter. If I zoom in and look at my preview, you can see it's going to go from solid to putting in the cut, which is exactly what I want. I'm going to hit the tick, and you can see that although it's still 3 mil thick overall, I've got a 1 mil indentation for these pieces, which is going to look pretty good when it's spinning. The last thing I might do is some fillets to kind of match these here. So I'm going to go to fillet, click on each of these, there should be five. Zoom in to help me. Okay, so I want it to match, to look concentric, like they have the same center point. So maybe about here. Might round this to three and a half. That looks good. Hit the tick. And then I might do the same for this one to get it nice and round. So once again, go to fill it, select each of my little lines, okay, now that I've selected them, I can use the arrow and try and get the preview how I want it. I'd say about 17 looks pretty good. Hit the tick and my shape is done. Since this will most likely be cut from clear acrylic, I'm going to come down to part one and edit the appearance and just go to the A for alpha, which changes the transparency. I'm going to turn that down and get a bit of a view of what this is going to look like. I can also come up to this menu here and turn off the edges, which is probably even more realistic again. 
my putt is finished and ready to be made.